Today we're going to look at some of the advanced things you can do on your Stream Deck. Let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at the Stream Deck and some of the advanced functionality that you can do with this device. I previously did a video before, but today we're going to go a step further and show you how you can program buttons to do callback URLs and APIs. But before we get started, be sure to like this video if you found it useful, click on subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss when I post new how to's and reviews. Previously, I've done videos on the Stream Deck uh, and comparisons between Stream Deck and Loop Deck. And I've also done some basic setup on the Stream Deck, but today I'm going to show you how you can utilize callback URLs and APIs to program buttons on the Stream Deck. So let me show you how it works. Okay, let's take a look at Stream Deck um, and how we can program URLs um, that are basically callback URLs and then APIs. And I'm going to show you an example using both and how you can do that on a Stream Deck. So I've got my Stream Deck here. Um, this is my main page that you're seeing right now. This is what I use on a regular basis. What we're going to focus on today is the demo piece um, and where I go to, I do a lot of presentations. So I'm constantly using this row of buttons on the bottom and this is an app called Presentify where I can um, highlight things and I can easily switch over to like if I wanted a circle, I could do a circle here. Um, so this is really easy to program something like this. Um, if, and, th and this isn't what I'm focusing on right now, I'm just kind of showing you that this is what I'm using as a tool to do this, uh, this video for you guys. But if you do like Presentify, there's a link down below uh, in the comments. I, I highly recommend the app if you do any kind of presentations or highlighting or you want to show people. And the Stream Deck makes it really easy to set up. Uh, if I click on here, we're just doing hotkeys. So this really isn't anything API based. What I do want to focus on today, though, is the API and callback URLs. And these are the two that we're going to work with today. One is an API. Um, so this first one is an API uh, button, and it's a shortcut. Uh, and then uh, this one is actually a shortcut. This one is a true API. And we're going to look at the differences between the two. And then also going to look at callback URLs and how those work. So on the screen behind here, this is a app called CleanShot. And this is what I use to film a lot of my videos. I use this for screenshots a lot. You can use this with a keyboard shortcut. Um, it also has a item in the or icon in the menu bar up above. So if I go here, I can jump over to CleanShot, which I'm actually using right now. So it's not showing up here, but um, you can go up there and you can record video, you can make GIFs, you can do screenshots, um, and it's really useful. Uh, you can do it through keyboard shortcuts. One of the things that it doesn't do uh, with shortcuts is like record video or take screenshots in specific dimensions, and that's where this um, URL scheme API comes in. So an API, <coughs> to kind of, to kind of, differentiate between the two. An API is usually hitting a website where you're doing some kind of command. You're doing like a, a get or a put or um, you're, you're requesting information, you're getting it back, and then you need some way to uh, use that information. The URL scheme API is a little different and it's a little easier because it's more localized. So um, here is an example of a callback URL and really this first part is the biggest part so I don't think you can do this on a PC um, but definitely works on Mac where we're actually calling the application uh, CleanShot and then we're giving it a command and this is really cool because CleanShot has um, has a bunch of these URLs that you can use and I can scroll if I scroll down uh, and I'll put a link to this in the comments as well but they have a whole bunch of they have a whole bunch of URLs that you can use as a callback, and it would it's really helpful if you want to do screenshots. So as an example, um, I've got one programmed here on this button right here, and um, this is a basic capture the full screen. So what I did for this was I called a website. 
So if I wanted to program something like this or another one, I could come over here, I could search for website, I can drag and drop this over, and then it's going to ask for the URL. This is kind of the, the key part of this. So if I wanted to say do another um, something else, maybe I wanted to capture, I'm just going to put this in here as an example. So what this is doing is we're going to copy this and we're going to put it over here. And what this does is it's going to capture a specific area. So we're calling the application, we're giving it a command to capture the area, and then we're using an X and a Y for the, um, the parameters, and then the width and the height, and then display. And all of these are parameters that you are optional. So if you look on the screen here, there's parameters, and it says that just about all of them are optional. And what they're going to do is start on an X, Y axis. They're going to do a specific width and height. Um, choose the display. So if you have multiple monitors, you can always do this on one monitor or the other. So rather than going through clean shot and kind of doing a screen grab and then dragging and dropping where you want to go, if you capture like the same section of a website every time, this these optional parameters work really well. Otherwise, you could just do the capture area and it'll work that way as well. That is an example of what you can do with a callback URL. And then when you have this here, you can give it a title and you can um, give it an icon. So you can have different icons like I've got here. I've got these different icons and some of them I've named, some of them I just know what they do. Um, so you can really customize your Stream Deck that way. So that is the, um, that's one way to do a callback URL. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is um, an API versus using something like a shortcut. So uh, I'm gonna focus on these two buttons right here and what they do. So the first one is utilizing this API request uh, plugin that is available on the uh, Stream Deck website. And this is a way to make an API request um, just using a button on your Stream Deck. Now there is another way to do this as well, and that is through um, a shortcut. So there is also, uh, so this is the API request plugin that I've installed and we'll go through what, what it all is here and what's happening here. And then the other way is through a shortcut and this is a plugin as well now the thing about this plugin that is available on the stream deck website is there is a version 2 of this plugin available and what you need to do is go to discord and you can request access to the um, this alpha version uh, which, which is version 2 and it works really well so version 1 is okay um, so it's kind of hit and miss but version 2 is has been really solid for me so i would recommend getting access to this version two um, if you're going to go this route and so the difference between the two is simply this um, the this button right here is utilizing a shortcut and this one is, that's accessing an api and then this button is going api direct <coughs> And so let's look at what that looks like. Um, so in the shortcut app, if you bring that up, uh, I am using this with Dackboard. And what these buttons do, uh, just kind of give you some background, what these these buttons do is if I, it switches my Dackboard. So Dackboard is like a magic mirror. I've done uh, some videos on this as well. Uh, so check that out. But um, on a magic on this magic mirror or that this version of a magic mirror that's made by Dackboard, I can have different displays um, and depending on what I'm doing for work because that display shows me uh, shows when I'm on video calls. So depending on what I'm doing for work, I want to show a different screen behind me, um, my company logo, or if I'm doing videos for my channel here, I want to show my uh, my YouTube channel logo behind me or maybe I just want some regular information. 
And rather than going into DAC board and changing the, the display, I just at a press of a button, I can change to any one of these displays and have that just automatically update. And those are done via API calls. So what I first did when I first started this out was I made shortcuts that accessed the API and then and that's how I made it work, which is a really easy way to do it. If you um, shortcuts is pretty easy to follow along and if I wanted to kind of go through this so to go through this with you, these are the shortcuts that are triggering these three shortcuts here on my stream deck. So let's look at the first one. If I go into my regular DAC board um, and what's happening here, I'm doing a API request. And if I show more here, I'm doing a put and then I'm IDing a screen. And this, if I just run this shortcut without a stream deck, it's gonna change my screen to this screen that I want um, that I want to use the screen ID and, and and that's the shortcut that's how it works so once this shortcuts done I can actually come over here and I'm using the shortcut plugin and this shortcut plugin is accessing my shortcuts folders my API calls and it's running the shortcut for me so this is one kind of easy way to do it you still have to set up the API call but you're using Apple shortcuts to set up your API and then accessing it. So there's, it's kind of like a two-step process here. Now the API button itself is doing something a little different. It's going API direct. So I'm eliminating the shortcut, the Apple shortcut from this, and I'm accessing the URL and I'm doing a put and I'm uh, in my body, I've got the screen ID. So everything here is contained within the button itself. So the difference between the two is if I press this button, I'm basically triggering an Apple shortcut that is triggering the API put. If I use this button, I'm hitting the API put direct. And those are two different ways that you can program um, your Stream Deck buttons, two different ways of doing it but um, really cool options and advanced functionality that you have available on your Stream Deck if you get into like API things. Now, one thing that's um, kind of invaluable to use when you're working with APIs is an app called Postman. And Postman lets you try all these things out because if you set up an API and you're, you don't really know if it's gonna work or not unless you run it, um, but what Postman does is it's kind of like a, a a test area for your APIs and it lets you create these different APIs and then you can test them out and run them and see if they work and try if you're having trouble with them you can troubleshoot them and that's one way that I worked with the um, DAC board APIs that's kind of how I figured out how to run those APIs and I will also put the DAC board link in the uh, comments below as well. All right so that's how you program a callback URL and an API on your Stream Deck. Hope that you found this interesting. I'd love to hear how you're using your Stream Deck in the comments below, so drop a note and let me know. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.